What's up guys? Joe at Momentum Works. Today I'm going to be talking about some big dog cat turbos. Realistically, these things belong on a pro mod, but we got a lot of guys running these as big singles on their caterpillars. So let's get into it. This is the Garrett GTX 55 compared to the Borg Warner S500. Stay tuned. All right, guys. So neither one of these turbos are new to the market at all. They've been around for a long time. It just seems like we've been getting a lot more calls about these, so I kind of wanted to compare and contrast and tell you guys a little bit about them. As always, majority of what I'm going to tell you is geared towards our clientele, which is the big rig market, but this is kind of applicable to anybody, whether you're using it on a pro mod or any other sort of application. Right off the bat, I'm going to tell you, this Garrett GTX, it's a ball bearing construction, and it's very expensive compared to the S500. Uh, right now, the GTX is about two times the price of the S500, mainly being because the GTX is ball bearing construction. Both of these turbos, I would call them the same frame size. They're both a large frame turbo. They both have a large turbine wheel, and they're both going to support a ton of power as a big single setup, or they could be used in an atmospheric setup um, as the low pressure turbo. Both of these turbos, and I'm sorry, I should have said this. This is the 85 millimeter. This is the 94. It's just what I can grab off the shelf for the video. Each of these turbos come at a bunch of different wheel sizes, and we're going to talk about that. Um, all the S500s use the same turbine wheel. All the GTX, uh, GTX 55s use the same turbine wheel, but you can get different compressor wheel inducers, and on this you can get overall wheel size differences as well. So we'll jump into that a little bit later in the video. We'll get into the nitty-gritty. But for the guys that aren't going to watch the whole video, the GTX 55, if you need every ounce of power out of a specific frame size, this is the way to go. Unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but for most guys, the S500 is going to be the way to go because of the fact that it's just so much cheaper. You can buy two of these turbos for the price of this one. So for a lot of working trucks and, you know, if you need more money in the build for something else, you're going to go with the S500 um, because, you know, it's just the more economy budget option. Let's now jump further into these two turbos. Let's talk about sizes on the GTX, sizes on the S500. All right, guys, so we're starting off with the GTX 55. This is specifically a GTX 5533, which means that it has a 133 millimeter compressor wheel. And we're talking about the OD, the portion of the wheel that you can't see. The part that you can see is the inducer. So 55 is for the frame size, and 33 is for the overall wheel size. So this is an 85 millimeter inducer. This is the smallest GTX 55 that they currently produce. So outside of the 85, you can also get a 90, or you can get an 85, an 88, a 91, and a 94. And then if you wanted to go larger than that, you have to go up to the GTX 5544. So that'd be 144 millimeter overall wheel. Um, and then you can get a 102 or a 106 millimeter inducer. I also wanted to point out, uh, they're all going to be a 13 blade boreless billet compressor wheel, which is pretty nifty. Now, as far as the turbine wheel, all the turbine wheels in the GTX turbos are going to be a 112 by 110. No, sorry, uh, 112 by 102. Sorry, too many stats in my head. So they all use this same turbine wheel, and I believe it is nine blades. You get a really nice bearing housing here, and of course, since this is dual ceramic ball bearing, you have the fins on here for cooling. One of the easiest ways to tell with Garrett if it is a ball bearing turbo is to look for these fins. It's got a super nice billet back plate. Overall, just a really nice turbo. And now I don't have an exhaust housing handy for the GTX, uh, but I can tell you a little bit about the sizes. They do a T6 and they do a V-band style flange. The T6 comes in a 124 and a 140, uh, 1.24 and 1.40 AR. Um, and then the T6 comes in a smaller 1.12, uh, another 1.24, and another 1.40. Now, it is important to note that all these housings are open flow. There are no divided housings available from Garrett. There may be some in the aftermarket, but as far as available from Garrett, they're your options. Moving on to our Borg Werner S500. This particular S500 has the 94 millimeter wheel. Uh, this is the largest S500 that Borg Werner offers. Now, the S500, you can get in two different wheel configurations. You can get an SX or you can get an SXE. The SXE has this 10 blade billet wheel, whereas SX, I'll throw an image up here, has an 8 plus 8 cast wheel. Now, you can get the billet SXE in a 94 millimeter or an 88 millimeter. Then the SX model, 
comes with a 88 or a 91. So this wheel, it is not boreless like the Garrett, but it is still a very nicely designed wheel. Flipping over here, this has a 120 millimeter turbine wheel. Uh, this one particularly is 120, I'm sorry, it's a 110 turbine wheel. 110 by 99 is the turbine wheel size on all the S500, whether you get an SX or an SXE. Um, you'll notice the lack of the billet bearing housing. This is a regular cast bearing housing, and this is a journal bearing turbo, a little different from the GTX. Housing options for this turbo, you can do a T6 divided, or you can also do a T6 open flow. The T6 divided comes in a 115, a 145, and a 160. The open flow comes in a 0.85, a 1.0, a 1.15, a 1.30, and a 1.25. 145. So the Borg definitely wins out in the fact that there are plenty more turbine housings available from Borg Warner for their specific large frame turbo. All right, guys. So it looks like I lost the audio on this portion of the video. My microphone must have died. So I'm going to do my best to redub what we're talking about here. Basically, we're talking about all of the portions of the turbo for your critical dimensions. So right there, we're talking about the air cleaner. That is six inches coming into the turbo, which will match most uh, Caterpillars. Next, we're talking about the compressor outlet, which is a 4.2 inch V-band. You can see that we have the elbow there. Yep, that's what I just picked up. We sell that elbow. We sell the clamp and the O-ring and everything you need to connect that up. If you have a Detroit, you've already got the proper elbow. Or if you've got a Signature 600 ISX, you already have the correct elbow. But if you have a Caterpillar, you will need to switch over to this V-band style elbow which is way better than the double O-ring Caterpillar from the standpoint of removing it, because as you know, it can be pretty difficult to remove those elbows. All right, guys, now that we're in for a closer look, this is an S500 exhaust housing. The outlet is going to be the same on the GTX as well. You can see this is not a standard flange like you would have on a Caterpillar or Detroit or an older Cummins. Uh, this is a 5.16 inch flat V-band. So what we have is this beautiful adapter that can V-band onto the back of your housing using the supplied clamp so that it is now a Marmon style outlet so that your factory downpipe will mate right up to this without issue. Well, if you don't want to do that, we also have the other end of this flange um, that has a small recess in it so you can slide a pipe in and weld your own downpipe up instead of using the adapter. Either way, we have the parts to do what you need to do to retro. All right, guys, so now that we have specs and details on each unit, um, with housing sizes, everything like that, you know, which one is best for you? Well, that answer really depends on who you are and what you're doing with your truck. Um, the S500, I'll tell you right off the bat, we sell way more S500 than we do GTXs. And, you know, that's mostly probably due to the price, uh, but it's also due to the fact that, you know, that the GTX, a lot of guys didn't think you could run a ball bearing on a road-going truck because there was a lot of problems with it. But guys, you got to remember that, you know, the SDP C15 Acer and the LEE C13 Acer, they were both running Garrett ball bearing turbos in those compound setups from 2008 to 2011. And they ran really good. And Caterpillar probably would have kept using ball bearings if they kept making road going engines. But of course, you know, 2011 with the EPA and yada, 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 they stopped making road engines. Or else I think that we would continue to see ball bearing usage in road trucks. So there is nothing scary about running a GTX ball bearing turbo on a road going truck other than the fact that it's just so damn expensive. So really, I think, you know, if you have to have the best of the best, I think the GTX is going to be great. It's going to spool up really quick. And realistically, I think you can get away with going with a slightly larger turbo on the GTX because of the ball bearing design is going to be a little bit more forgiving from the standpoint of spool up because of the fact that it takes less exhaust energy to spin this wheel than it does to spin this and not to say that you can't spin this up and i know a lot of guys are complaining because there's no oil pressure on this turbo but guys you know we're not going to argue with science here the ball bearing turbo certainly spins up faster with less energy than the journal bearing turbo now when i would use the s500 s500 i'd probably use for nine out of ten customers why because it's a great bargain they're a little bit more readily available uh, there's a couple more housing choices and like i said it really just comes down to price i mean I could get you one of these, and you know, prices always change, guys. I hate saying prices in videos because the price now is not the price tomorrow or the next day because that's just how things go in the economy. Capitalism. But anyway, right now I can tell you that this is less than a $3,000 turbo with the housing when we're shooting this. I think the Supercore is like $2,200, whereas this Garrett GTX is going to be somewhere in the mid-fives. So realistically, you could blow up an S500 and get another one for the same price of 
one GTX. Um, get ahead of myself. Also want to point out, both of these turbos are always sold as super cores, which means they come without an exhaust housing. Now, you can get an S500 with an exhaust housing under part number 179188 or 179191, but it's going to have a 0.85 exhaust housing, which is only ever going to be good for like a gasoline application, which you, the viewer, you might have a gasoline application. But like I said, most of our clientele is all truck guys. If you're a truck guy, 0.85 is just too small for you to run on your S500. All right, guys, so we won't beat this to death. We covered, you know, all the different sizes. We covered what might work better depending on your application. If you got an unlimited budget, GTX. If you're on a budget, S500. Now, as far as horsepower range, if you're not making at least 750 to 800 horsepower, don't even look at these turbos for a truck because you can definitely get away with a much smaller turbo that's going to be much more efficient. So for guys that are looking for a big atmospheric turbo in their uh, compound setup, or if you're looking to run a big old single, these turbos will be a great option for you. We'll pair them up with the right housing, and you'll be off to the races. Guys, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. That is the easiest way to get a hold of me. If you'd like to place an order, you can do that on the website, or you can do it on the phone. Steven would be happy to take your order if you want to go that route. If you have any questions, you can feel free to leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you want to tell me I'm an idiot like most people do, please leave that in the comments below so the algorithm helps pay my bills. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Either one of these turbos, we try to carry as many of these as possible in each size as we can, along with all the different housings, because no one likes to wait for parts. They want it right away, and we really pride ourselves on having that stuff on the shelf so that when you need it, we got it. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.